This instructional video is designed to show you how to determine standard thermodynamic quantities, the Gibbs free energy, the enthalpy, and the entropy, as well as an equilibrium temperature, if it exists, when given a reaction and information necessary to fill in a standard thermodynamic data table. So the first thing we have to do is verify that we have a balanced reaction, and in this case we do not. So in order to balance this, we need a 2 here, a 3 here. We only need one of the iron 3 oxide, and we need three of our magnesium. So now that this is balanced, and you can verify that for yourself, we need to fill in the data table here. In order to do that, you'll actually need a lookup table of some sort. I have values written here, and so I'll go on and put those in. For the delta G and delta H, for solid iron and solid magnesium, we'll get zero. And that's because they're in their standard state. So the enthalpy and the Gibbs free energy are both zero. For the remaining values, we'll actually have to write these in. And this is a Make sure we're matching everything up correctly. That's minus 5, 6, 9, 4, 4. Minus 6, 9, 4, 7. And then for the iron 3 oxide, for delta G, we have 0 0.98 and minus 8, 2, 2, 1, 6. And then everything will be non-zero for our entropy because we're not dealing with pure crystals uh, at zero degrees Kelvin. So for our solid iron, we have 27. For our magnesium oxide, 26.9. For the solid magnesium, 32.5. And for the iron three oxide, 89.5. So now that we have all of these values, the next step is to apply the stoichiometric sum of products minus the stoichiometric sum of reactants. And so for delta G, standard, that means that we're going to have one times the value for our iron 3 oxide plus three times the value for magnesium minus the entire quantity of two times our value for iron plus three times our value for the magnesium oxide. So in writing that out for the reactants uh, we have one times the minus 740.98 plus three times zero minus for the reactants we have 2 times 0 plus 3 times negative 569.4 and these units will be in kilojoules per mole so when we simplify this out for delta G we get 967.22 kilojoules per mole. We'll perform the same thing with the stoichiometric sum of products minus stoichiometric sum of reactants. So for the delta H, 822.16, 3 times 0, it's going to be 2 times 0 plus 3 times negative 601.7 and the enthalpy is also in kilojoules per mole and so if we were to multiply this through and solve for it we get 982.94 kilojoules per mole we do the same thing for the entropy right down here at the bottom of the board. 
and we find 1 times 89.96 plus 3 times 32.5. So that's the stoichiometric sum of products minus our stoichiometric sum of reactants, 2 times 27.0 plus 3 times 26.9. And this will be in joules per mole Kelvin. This gives us a value of 52.76 joules per mole Kelvin. So now we have values for all three thermodynamic quantities. And the remaining thing to do is to determine if we have an equilibrium temperature. So thermodynamic equilibrium requires that delta G be equal to zero. And the only way that's possible is if delta H and delta S have the same sign and we find a temperature that is sufficiently large or sufficiently small in order to make the result delta G zero. So what we mean by that is this. Delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. If we assume that these values hold true enough over a range of temperatures, then if delta G is zero at equilibrium, we have delta H equals the equilibrium temperature times delta S. So what we'll need to be able to recognize is that we do have the same sign on both of these. The units are different. So we'll need to correct for kilojoules. And in the end, we find that the equilibrium temperature is 18,630 degrees Kelvin. So that's a very large value, which means that in all likelihood, delta G will remain positive under normal laboratory conditions.